We are Big Hits, WBTC, and that's Joni Mitchell from her Court and Spark album, and Help Me. It's 831, and uh, that's exactly what he does, helps us stay healthy. And we talked to the doc on this last day of 2019, wrapping up the year. Of course, talk to the doc, presented by our friends at Mako's Market and Pharmacy, 240 East 3rd Street in downtown Eurexville. And good morning, Dr. Tim McKnight. Good morning. First off, uh, you're talking about helping people. What? Why can't you in the medical field find a cure for colds? Uh, I've been fighting this thing now for a week and a half. Yeah, I, I think the answer there is those viruses are probably smarter than we are with our medications. They're always changing. And, you know, once you try to find a medicine that fights that particular virus, yeah. within a few months it's mutated and it looks like something else. So well, this, we're stuck. Uh, this cough and this uh, sniffling thing has gone on now way too long. And uh, looks like it's going to carry over for me into 2020 as I welcome in the new year. Well, unfortunately, they sometimes don't go away quickly, but uh, you will recover from it, I can guarantee okay. you Okay, all right. It's just taken a long time, but I hear that's uh, this particular strain, a lot of people are hanging. There is a with lot of for- upper respiratory stuff, and I tell you, those uh, foggy nights that we've had seem mm-hmm. to stir the coughing up for a lot of people. So Good point. It's been a, it's been a rough uh, four to six weeks here with the upper respiratory infections we're seeing. Well, count me in on the uh, list of uh, those who got zapped by it. thought it'd be interesting to look back at uh, 2019 in the medical world and kind of look ahead uh, to 2020, if we could, and see what uh, is on the horizon. What Every year, it seems like we have medical breakthroughs. You and I have talked about this several times in the morning about the uh, medical folks have announced that this or that. Uh, anything jump out at you for 2019? Well, you know, you know, it's it's interesting when you hear about these studies. Most of them are observational studies. So they'll they'll look at a bunch of people and they'll make an observation and then they'll report this and it'll sound like, well, this is contradicting what they told uh-huh. us the year before. And so the observational studies really you have to mount those up study after study before you can come to anything conclusive. And of course the double blind placebo controlled studies are the best studies where you don't know what you're giving somebody, they don't know what they're giving, they're receiving, and you're looking at an outcome, a specific mm-hmm. measurement. Those are the strongest studies. So most of these are not those double blind placebo controlled studies. I remember just a uh, month or so ago we were talking about uh, something that I thought was, you know, they were making it out in the story to be such a huge discovery that uh, this was, uh, I believe, with heart disease, uh, right. the, using the stents right. and the uh, the uh, uh, statins. Right. And uh, they said that was a huge discovery, and um, you you didn't seem too uh, you know shocked by it or thinking yeah, that's it was what a breakthrough. I mean. Once once you look at it, it's like, well, okay, it's it's not. Maybe you can't draw all the conclusions you'd want to when you hear the headlines. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's it's been an interesting year. There's a a study done um, a couple uh, a couple of studies this year on medications that we thought were safe for us that they're questioning. One of which is a blood pressure medicine called nifedipine. When they looked at 60,000 people who were taking this, they saw a, an increased risk for sudden cardiac death on this, on this medicine. Wow. Now, again, this is observational. There's no cause and effect shown here. Mm-hmm. But if you take nifedipine and you go into this panic like, oh, no, this is going to kill me, right. uh, that's not what you can conclude from this study. It was an observational study. But, you know, there's, uh, there's another study on uh, a, a class of medications called anticholinergics, and we use those for a, a number of different things, but they're very sedating. And I'll tell you, I, I do think there's something with this because I've seen this in my practice. Um, we use anticholinergics like, like Benadryl and Antivert and some of these other medications that ha- can be sedating. We can use mm-hmm. them as an mm-hmm. antispasmodic for the gut, uh, or we can use them as, a, as a, uh, a sedative to help you sleep, help you relax, help you with allergies. And uh, they looked at 60,000 people uh, with dementia and uh, 225,000 people without dementia. And they concluded that those people over 55 years old who took these anticholinergics on a regular basis, so let's say Tylenol PM to sleep at night, mm-hmm. or let's say Antivert for chronic dizziness and vertigo, sure. or, or even uh, Xanax, which is one that we, most of us worry about, that there was a 50% increased risk of dementia. 
Wow. So, you know, you're taking Tylenol every night to sleep, yeah. Tylenol PM, fifty mm-hmm. percent increased risk of dementia. That's a again it's not big it's an association, it's not cause effect. But it you do have to sort of pause and say, Okay, what is my underlying sleep issue here? It's not a deficiency mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. of Benadryl. Right. You know, there's something else causing that. And most of the time it's diet or it's lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But we want the quick fix. So but there's a potential price to pay. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons many of us we don't like that class of medicines called benzodiazepines, the Xanax, the Anavert, the Ativan, the Clonopin. They really can work very well to help us sleep, but there's a huge price to pay down the road. Right. Okay, good advice. Talking with uh, Dr. Tim McKnight from Trinity Hospital, Twin City. To talk to the doc, presented by Mako's Market and Pharmacy in uh, downtown Eurexville. And uh, looking ahead to 2020, anything in your medical journals that you see that is pretty exciting is maybe a breakthrough or i mean well i yes I, there was a yes uh, two things and 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 this goes back to diet which is uh, nutrition one of my passions um one recent study showed that plant-based diets had a 32 percent decreased risk of cardiovascular death 25 percent mm-hmm. decreased risk of all-cause mortality really i think the plant-based diet is here to stay it's not a fad it mm-hmm. uh, doesn't need, mean that we need to be vegetarian, but we need to do a much better job with eating plants. Right. Um, and, and, and we've talked about that quite a bit. <clears throat> Another study showed that <clears throat> it was very interesting. The keto diet's been really popular this year, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. People eating high fat, high protein, low, low carbohydrate diets, very low carbohydrate diets. They lose weight. I've not been a big fan of this particular diet because it's so extreme and the, and the fat content's so high. But a recent study was done uh, and published, um, I can't remember which journal it was. It was I, actually, I think it was called the Nutrients Journal. And uh, they said that those people who are on the keto diet and they take a day off, so you have a cheat day like many mm-hmm. of us will do, they saw that there was inc- evidence of increased blood vessel damage when you do that. With just a, a just cheat day? Just one day off, wow. yes. And so they looked at these markers of inflammation. And the idea goes back to this simple concept that too much blood sugar, too much glucose causes inflammatory changes. And they mm-hmm. can measure this in one day. So you're eating relatively clean in terms of keeping the carbs out. And then you have a cheat day. You get the surge yeah. of glucose, and we can measure inflammatory markers that dam- damage blood vessels. Wow, that, that's so, incredible. One day could derail you that, that quickly. Yeah, so it's and, the, you know, I've, I've preached this for years. Uh, the, the, G, the, the bacteria in your gut will alter their genetic expression in, just in, after one meal depending on what food is presented to it. And that's the same with our entire body. So one day, one meal um, can make an impact on, on our biochemistry. So that concept isn't really uh, too new as well. Um, another I, uh, study that was done this year that I think sh- we should think about uh, in terms of protein shakes, because protein shakes are very uh, popular, right? Everybody, that's a mm-hmm. good way to get protein. Mm-hmm. And there's different types of protein shakes. And one of the protein sources is whey protein. And whey proteins tend to have, um, have a lot of branched chain amino acids, which bodybuilders love. I was going to say, isn't this a lot of yeah. fitness people? Uh, yes, use absolutely. Of- um, but they saw that if you have uh, at least a study in mice showed increased branched chain amino acids caused a decrease in brain serotonin, which brain serotonin in the brain makes you feel good emotionally. Sure. Right? It's, it's uh, we kind of take advantage of that chemistry to get to help right, treat people right, with de- right. depression, but they noticed that when there was a decreased level in brain serotonin, there was a shorter lifespan and increased obesity rates in mice. Okay, again, this is mice. This is not humans. This is an observational study. A, a lot of a, a lot more has to be explained to understand this, but I think we we have to think about everything that we do, everything we take into our mm-hmm, bodies. Mm-hmm. But my final comment on this is, we talked about this before, what's coming up in 2020? I think more on intermittent fasting. Excellent evidence that this is a really good way to change your biochemistry to lower insulin levels and help us lose weight right. and have more energy. So I think that's what we need to watch for, we good. need to be looking into. I'm all about more energy, especially this cold that uh, seems to really drain you <laughs> yeah. of your energy. Well, when you... yeah, when it's dark outside, then who, who doesn't want to be in bed, that's right? That's a good point. Yeah. That's a very good point. Well, we appreciate all you do for us, helping us stay healthy. And uh, next week it'll be January already, and that means, of course, uh, you're ready to roll back in 
to fit for life. Yeah, I, and I tell wow. you, I'm excited. Uh, what excites me is that we've got a lot of people interested, mm-hmm. and we have a we have a lot of people signed up for this class, and just uh, I, we can feel the enthusiasm from the people that have registered. So we're really pumped to get started with them. And, I, and the comments that I get from people that have gone through it or have uh, you know known somebody that has gone through it is the the way that they say that it really changed their life as far as the way they uh, approach. Uh, you know, staying healthy, uh, you know, the, what they eat, how they look at food, um, exercise. And, and that's got to be a great feeling for you because that's really what this whole program was designed to do. Yeah, it really is, especially wh- when we see people make those changes and they just light up and they tell their friends and they become proponents. We have a couple of our former graduates who have really um, gone on social media and just recruited people all over the all over the place to fill up this class and they're like we just have to get the word out and we really appreciate them for all the good words that they put out for us well next week we'll talk about uh week one and we'll kind of go through it each week as uh, as we do and uh review what uh, what we're talking about and how it all fits together so kind of an on the radio version of fit for life i'd be uh, happy to do do as well yeah Dr. Tim McKnight, Happy New Year. Same to you. I'll see you next year. See you in uh, 2020. It just seems strange saying 2020, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a new decade. That's just it re- bizarre. Yes. Time is flying by, isn't it, it? It really is. But we appreciate all you do for us and uh, uh, keeping us feeling good. And uh, thanks to our friends at Mako's as well. I need to get down there and pick up a couple supplements today after I get off the air. I, I loaded up about two weeks ago down there. So oh, so that means the shelves are empty. Well, not empty, in. but okay. I, I told him, I warned him, I said, you, you need to have a certain line here because they're going to fly off the shelves soon. It, well, exactly. Every time you get the uh, Fit for Life program started, everybody uh, you know goes in there. Yes. Nutrescriptive is the Nutrescriptive. brand that they carry, That's and they do brand. an amazing uh, job, uh, high-quality uh, supplements. So come in, talk to the folks at uh, Mako's Market and Pharmacy. They can point you in the right direction and they're at 240 east third street happy new year we'll uh, talk next week i look forward to it thank you dr tim mcknight in studio talk to the doc presented again by mako's market and pharmacy